In the episode Peacemaker of Season 4, Rick bought an eponymous 1890s Colt 45 revolver, which according to him sells better than just about any antique gun I carry. While Rick was obviously very excited about the gun, seller Brian made the foolish mistake of revealing that he had bought it for only $25. What should you pay for it? I gave 25 bucks for it. Give me 26 right now. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. The two men eventually struck a deal at 3000 with Rick not even calling in his weapons expert first. When Sean later inspected the revolver, he told Rick that it was worth at least $5,000 in its current condition, but could also be worth a lot more depending on how rare the specific model was. According to the New York Times, the first ever Colt 45 Peacemaker, originally manufactured in 1873, sold at auction for the insane amount of $242,000 in 1987, and although the one that Rick bought was manufactured much later and was probably part of a larger production line, similar models are valued between $2,000 and $42,000. Granted, Rick made an offer within the price range, yet he surely could have gone a little bit higher and still made an easy profit. Up next we have a man who brought an official 1912 Stockholm Olympics diploma to the pawn shop, hoping to flip it for a decent profit. Rick immediately said that the item was cool, because the diploma was given to top 8 finishers at each event. The man stated that he found the item in a small charity shop and got it dirt cheap for only a few bucks. Still, because everything was written in Swedish he knew nothing about, he had to google it to learn more, and it turned out that this diploma was for a second place finish in 800 meter swimming relay for the United States. Now, even though Olympics were not a big deal back then, the item was interesting nonetheless, complete with Athena, the Greek goddess of wisdom associated with the Olympics on it. I love stuff like this. It's both a significant piece of art and a very rare sports collectible. Believing many collectors would be interested in the item, Rick got down to the man's asking price, which was $1,500. Instead of trying to lower the price, Rick just kept squinting, probably hoping that the man would lower it himself, but the man was firm in his belief that Rick would be able to earn much more on the item. Surprisingly, Rick accepted the price and called it perfect, without even trying to lowball the customer, and they shook hands for mutual pleasure. All things considered, in the end it felt like the man sorta of shot himself in the foot and lowballed himself. In Season 10, a man walked into the pawn shop with a 1941 Gibson SJ200 guitar that was once owned by Steven Stills of the folk rock group Crosby, Stills & Nash. Rick immediately called in his associate Jesse, who said that the guitar itself was already worth between $75 and $90,000, but the fact that it was owned by a rock legend added another 20 to 30 k and basically made it the holy grail of Gibson guitars. The owner was looking to get $110,000 for the instrument, as well as the accompanying bill of sale signed by Stills himself, but Rick eventually managed to strike a deal with him at $85,000. Gotta have 90. Okay. Change your mind, call me. 85, man. All right. I thought it was a fair price. And they both walked away happy. Considered by many critics, filmmakers and fans to be the greatest film ever made, Citizen Kane released in 1941 was actually Orson Welles' first feature film. The movie was groundbreaking in many ways and was praised for innovative lighting and focusing methods as well as dramatic editing. Interestingly, Welles was only 25 years old when he produced the film, probably unaware that his creation would influence filmmakers for decades to come. When in season 14 of Pawn Stars, a man brought in a production still from the movie signed by Orson Welles himself, Rick found it pretty damn cool. The customer explained that he stumbled upon the production still while going through the photos of his late grandfather who was a big movie buff. Since he wasn't much of a movie guy, he decided to sell it as it had no sentimental value to him. Surprisingly, the man didn't even see the movie, which gave Rick an opportunity to clue him in. Still, even though the production still was awesome, he wasn't so sure about the authenticity of Wells' signature, so he asked the man how much he was looking to sell it for. When the man said 5 grand, Rick decided to give his buddy expert a call to see if the signature is legit, because the real value of the item depended on it. The man said that seeing something like this is rare and was highly skeptical about it, but after thorough inspection concluded that it was indeed and without question the real deal, estimating its value around $26 to $2700. With the expert's job done, Rick and the customer started haggling. The customer asked for $2200, but Rick immediately cut it down by a grand. Can you go $2200? Nope. Go $1200. I mean, I got a business. I mean, I got to frame this thing, everything else. It's, um, it's really cool. 
Nevertheless, the customer asked for more, and Rick had no choice but to up the amount of money a bit, so they sealed the deal at $1,500. After a yard sale fan came across an interesting looking metal one day, he purchased it for just 75 cents and thinking he might make some profit of it, he brought it to the gold and silver pawn shop to sell it. Since Rick was sure the enameled White Eagle medallion was worth a lot of money, he decided to take a chance and purchased it for $6,000. A wise decision as it turned out since the expert Craig Gottlieb later told Rick that the medal was from the era of Tsarist occupation of Poland and was worth much more than what Rick had paid. 30 to 40 grand. 30 to 40 thousand dollars. <laughs> That's incredible. In the end, both the customer who had brought it in and Rick made excellent profits from the metal, which was eventually sold for $30,000. As Rick himself once said, he's crazy about sunken treasures and shipwreck items, as we can't simply imagine the journeys they've been on. Obviously, every shipwreck item has a unique story to tell, and people all over the world are constantly exploring deep seas and oceans, hoping they'll come across some valuable piece of history. One time, an unsuspecting woman brought an old belt to the gold and silver pawn shop, believing that the belt was most likely worthless, and initially considered putting it out in a art sale. However, it wasn't just any belt, but rather the belt from a ship that belonged to Dutch East India Company. Established in 1602 in Netherlands, the company carried out colonial trading and commerce in Asia, and is considered by many to be the forerunner of modern corporations. Do you lose this when you're like in the Navy or something? <laughs> the late old man actually laughed at the bell, calling it a reproduction and saying that the item was fake, as it seemed to have never been soaked in seawater because there was no corrosion. Cautious as always, the old man suggested that they call in an expert. However, after hearing the old man's concerns, the expert explained that 90% of the shipwrecks are in shallow waters and that most of them are sticking up. Furthermore, he concluded that while the lack of a large patina might cause some concern, this shipwreck was most likely only partially submerged. Without a doubt, the belt was authentic and came from a ship that sank in 1602, so Rick quickly struck a deal with the owner of the bell. Considering the Dutch East India Company's innovations and business practices laid the foundations for the rise of giant global corporations in the centuries to come, the belt from one of their ships was definitely a jackpot. In the mid-90s, a woman walked into the Harrison's pawn shop with four sets of photo gravures by famous American photographer Edward Curtis. Rick didn't know much about this early photographic process, which used copper plates and gelatin paper with an etching process to create prints, but because the woman was only looking to get 50 bucks out of it, he decided to take a chance and bought the four sets off of her. After doing some research, Rick found out that the photo reviewers were worth a lot more and he eventually sold them for $20,000, making one of the biggest profits in the pawn shop's history. Plenty of serious collectors and hardcore fans are always willing to splash some money and pay a small fortune for valuable sports memorabilia, ranging from rare trading cards to worn out uniforms. Sometimes, as with a piece of art, an iconic item of sports memorabilia is a sound investment that's almost sure to appreciate and value. However, sometimes a jackpot in the form of such piece just falls into your lap dirt cheap. In addition to cars, guitars and guns, Rick is also a collector of sports memorabilia and when a New England Patriots player came into the pawn shop, Rick bought the 2004 Super Bowl ring off of him. Back in 2001, New England Patriots won the game against St. Louis Rams 20-17. Every year, the members of the winning team receive a trophy ring. For whatever the reason, rookie Patriot Brock Williams had to pawn his diamond-encrusted ring and never came back for it, which means it became Rick's after requisite 120 days. This is definitely one of more interesting and valuable items in Rick's collection, since he stated that he has no plans of parting with it, unless someone offers a crazy amount of $100,000 that is. In the very first episode of Pawn Stars, a customer brought Rick an 1890 Hotchkiss 2 powder cannon that an expert in cannon restorer checked out and later even tested at the shooting range. Yeah! After Rick asked how much he could pay for the cannon and still make money, the expert replied, I would say 40,000 all day long. 
The customer was pretty happy saying that he had only expected to get 30,000 which admittedly doesn't give you the best starting point for negotiations but Rick also accepted this price immediately which probably meant that there would have been some room for negotiations as the pawnbroker knew that he would be able to sell the cannon for a lot more than 30 grand. Thank you for checking this video out and don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe for new videos every day. Turn that bell notification on and comment down below that you subscribed and we'll make sure to reply and thank as many of you as we possibly can. Once again thank you for watching and see you next time.